And we're back, and I'm joined by Palmer Lucky, who is the inventor of the Oculus Rift. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks for being here, man. This is this is really cool. I I first got to see that original kind of duct tape prototype of the Oculus Rift at PAX Prime, I think, was that 2012? Yeah, that was way back in 2012. That was a minute ago. Less and than three years ago, though. Yeah, well, this has come a long way, and this is, this is uh, first of all, we should probably say this is not the final version. This is a... This is an engineering, engineering sample, sample of so the Oculus Rift, but it's largely representative of what we're going to be shipping. There's yeah. a few chain, you know, a few small things in production materials, but overall, this is what gamers are going to be using early next year. And is this going to come packed in with? Uh, it's going to have what? The Xbox One controller with it? That's right. We're packing okay. in an Xbox One gamepad. We've been working with developers on a lot of VR games. Some of them for over two years at this point, and we wanted to make sure that every person who buys a Rift will be able to buy their content. That is, we wanted developers to know that every person who buys a Rift can play their game without having to buy a separate piece of hardware. And Gamepad has been in our best practices since pretty early days. That's that's very smart. You also made motion controllers, which I hear are really yeah. fun. I haven't so had a chance to check those out. So we also just announced uh, uh, 3D motion controllers that we're calling Oculus Touch, and those are going to be shipping shortly after the Rift as a separate kind of add-on product. Uh, they're able to track the position of your position and orientation of your hands in space, but they're also able to track gestures, so what your fingers are doing. So you can give someone a thumbs up, you can point at things, oh, um, wow. you can wave at people. Give them a finger? You could do all kinds of things Anything with Oculus Touch. Anything you could do with, with fingers, you could do it with You could do all kinds of things okay. with Oculus Touch. All right, and you've got, you've got headphones that are built in, but yes. it's also, of course, compatible with so it's not just headphones, it's actually a full audio stack. We've got a 3D audio SDK that gives you uh, positional audio that's pretty fantastic. Oh, but then it actually goes up the chain. We have on board to the headset our own uh, digital to analog converter and then our own headphone amplifier and then our own headphone module. So we can precisely control exactly what the person is going to hear through the whole stack. That means that developers know that however they mix their game is exactly how gamers are going to hear it. That's really It also cool. has an integrated microphone and every microphone will be the same. Same thing, it's a microphone to a analog to digital converter and then back through to USB, which means that devs can rely on everyone having that same mic. So gone are the days of, at least in VR, of people, you know, if you have the crackly guy on the server, the quiet guy on the server, the guy whose mic doesn't, can't ba you know, cancel out any of the background oh noise. Oh, wow. So you, um, God, you guys are, you guys are kind of everywhere. Like, uh, you had the whole announcement of, of working together with Microsoft and uh, getting this kind of, getting this stable on Windows, just making sure it works out of the box, basically? That's if you've used DK1 or DK2, you know that it's a huge pain to set up. And it's not just about setup, it's about performance. By working with Microsoft, we're able to get under the OS in a way that lets us reduce latency, increase performance, and make sure that the Rift just works when you plug it in. And that's really critical. It also means that we can help them improve DirectX for VR so that we can get all kinds of optimizations that are not necessarily parallel to the kind of optimizations you would make for a traditional 2D game. Like for VR, you don't want to have any buffered frames. You don't want to render ahead. You want to have absolutely minimal latency, almost at the expense of all other factors. Right. And that's something that we've been able to work with Microsoft to make happen for the Rift. Okay, cool. And so, elephant in the room, you guys got bought by Facebook too. That's right. How, how has that been? Have they been pretty much hands off or have they well, been? Well, it's not like we got bought. It's like you say when you fall into love. It's not you know yeah. necessarily an accident always. The old ball but and chain. Like I mean, if anything, if you say, I sold yeah, Facebook. No, I don't. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> no shame in that, I man. Mean, I mean, Oculus is largely run as an independent entity. You know, we we work closely with Facebook. They give us access to a lot of resources on the people side, the money side, the marketing side. But one of the reasons that we partner with Facebook is because they believe in our vision for virtual reality. This may be hard to believe, but Mark Zuckerberg is actually a huge VR nerd, and he <laughs> really actually thinks that it's going to be the next major computing platform. Okay, well, I mean, it, it, you got some you got some pretty cool validation because you guys came out on the, I mean, there was there was no VR on the on the playing field at the time. Like, there was kind of... Well, it's worse than that. It wasn't that there was no VR. It's yeah. that virtual reality had failed so many times before. Sure. It was a negative atmosphere on an empty playing field. And I do think that in the last few years, that's really changed. It's not just us. There's so many people yeah. that are starting to get into virtual reality and starting to really show that it's something that the industry, the games industry should care about, not just some niche toy for a few crazy VR geeks. And at the end of the day though, it's still like, it's still a matter of experiencing it for yourself. Like you really you've gotta have to. get it on people's, what's, what's your plan for, for handling that? Well, we're at E3 showing it to as many people as we can. Our booths keep getting bigger and bigger, not because of vanity, it's because we keep showing more and more people. Like we've got two levels in our booth, all loaded with demo stations because it's important that gamers try it. That's the only way you can convert people. And it'll also be 
helpful when people have these in their hands and they actually show them to people, like they've started doing with the dev kits. And we're also trying to work on strategies where we can work with retail partners so that people can actually go and try this thing. Would it be safe to assume that given that Microsoft has its own chain of stores, we might at some point conceivably see Oculus Rift's demo stations in there? I can't make any comments about that specifically, okay. sorry. But the goal is to make sure that as many people experience VR as possible before making a decision to get into it. Because that's the only way they're going to make an informed decision is if they know what they're getting. Now, this is an awesome machine that works with another machine that you have to buy separately. I know that that's kind of a concern PC. because, yeah, not everybody has a PC laying around. And that's yep. one thing that, you know, Sony has the Morpheus and you plug that into the, the PS4. The PS4 has a pretty strong install base and that's, they have proprietary hardware there. Have you guys thought about doing anything that makes it easier to just go throw a bunch of money at one thing and bring it home in one box? We have. And like we've, we've been trying to be transparent about this. We want people to know that you're going to need to buy a new PC if you're not already a PC gamer. Like, largely, the Rift is going to be bought by gaming enthusiasts in the early days, ones who already have good GPUs that maybe need to upgrade, but they don't need to go get a whole new PC. If you're an everyday person, you're almost certainly going to need that new PC. So we've been working with NVIDIA, AMD, and a few leading PC manufacturers to make sure that there's options for people where they can go out, buy everything in store, and walk home with everything they need to do. It's going to be expensive because they have to buy that PC, but we want people to know that because we, we don't want to sell to people who aren't going to be able to use our product or are going to have a bad experience with the product. Right, right. Or even worse, they buy it and feel like they were tricked. I've met people who think that the Rift is a standalone device. And while that's a great idea for the future, that you're just rendering everything on board the headset, it's not the reality of today. This is pushing the cutting edge of what you're even able to do with PCs. Now, there's one, there's one kind of b big part of this that um, Apple... Are they going to? Do you think they're in involved in this at all? Are they going to? Have you have you worked with them at all? Uh, will this work on a on a MacBook? It's not going to work on any MacBook that exists or is known to exist in the near future. Okay. I, it, it's one of the things we actually announced is that we're putting Mac support on hold for our launch and focusing on Windows. One of the reasons for that is not that if people have said, "Oh, but why won't you support Macs?" So many people have Macs. It's true. A lot of people have Apple hardware, especially in the laptop space, but the the GPUs in those, they're just, they're not even close to what we're pushing for our recommended spec. They're not even close to what you need to provide a reliable, good VR experience across a wide variety, variety of developers. And that isn't looking to change in their fu future. Apple hasn't been prioritizing performance in their machines for some time. Mm. And it doesn't look like that's going to change in the near future. But as soon as it does, yeah. we definitely want people buying Apple hardware that, will, that, they, that they can use the Rift. Okay. Um, you guys kind of prior to you know teaming up with Microsoft uh, have there's the gear VR out there that has oculus branding on it what was that what was that partnership like or integration or whatever you so, call it so gear VR is a Samsung product that allows right. you to take a note or a galaxy s and pop it into a uh, into an enclosure that has a touchpad on the side uh, optics and also a custom sensor that we helped design with a very high update rate that's been ca factory calibrated for much higher accuracy than the sensors that are in any kind of phone that's been really cool, working with Samsung to make a product that can be used anywhere without a PC. It's not necessarily cheaper. You need one of these flagship phones. It's still you know, a lot of money to buy one of these phones and the Gear VR. But there are places that you can use it that you just can't use a Rift. For example, yeah, you can on a plane, on a train, on an automobile. Yeah, I, <laughs> totally. Yeah, no, I mean, I love the idea of, of being able to watch a, a movie on a big screen TV on an airplane. Yes, and even if you can't get high performance gaming, even just that is still a really valuable thing. And... In the long run, virtual reality is going to move towards a model where the headsets are doing all the rendering on board in a way where you can use virtual reality anywhere. Where it's something that you want to carry with you, maybe even wear all of the time. Gotcha. Well, can we take a little bit uh, of a look at yeah, uh, sure. what we got going on here? This is, um, so again, yeah. this is, this is, uh, it's yeah, the it's right, not, it's not the not right shape final. for the most part. This is so, so what we've got around here is a lot of the case is actually built around very lightweight plastics and textiles, uh, fabrics. Huh. that have let us make it really lightweight and comfortable and breathable. Uh, like you can actually see the body's made of fabric that's transparent to infrared light. Underneath this fabric, it looks just like a smooth covering. There's actually a huge constellation of infrared LEDs that can emit w light in a non-visible wavelength. And we're able to track that with oh, our wow. motion sensors. Um, you've got a similar thing on the back. You've got more fabric and another constellation of LEDs. That means you can track the entire headset 360 degrees using only one sensor that you can place on your desk or on top of your monitor, your wall, or wherever you want to do that. Um, we've done a lot of the work on the ergonomics. You can see kind of this strap assembly here. 
It actually rotates with pretty low force so that it can adapt to different uh, facial profiles. We've also got a uh, spring-loaded mechanism in here that allows you to adjust not just the size of the band, okay. but also the tension of the band. So and the one big question I know is a lot of people wear glasses or have, you know. Yes. So uh, it's really impossible to build. You can build something like with Gear VR where you can adjust for nearsightedness, but that's only one of many problems that people have with their vision. Uh, you can't correct for astigmatism or you know, all kinds of different other optical problems. What we wanted to do is make it really easy for people to wear glasses with the Rift or with contacts. So the Rift actually comes with multiple facial interfaces. This foam layer that you see here, oh, okay. that are shaped for different faces, but also a spacer that you can put in that adapts it to make it so that it, glasses are very easy to wear with it. And that means you can wear what you already own and it perfectly corrects your vision better than any kind of system we could have built can do. That's awesome. Have you guys have you guys landed on a price point at all? We had, don't have anything to announce right now. Okay. We're trying to keep it as affordable as we can, but people should be aware it's not going to be something that anybody can just yeah. go out and buy for a few hundred dollars, primarily because of the PC. Like People need to realize, for your average consumer, you're going to need to buy a PC, and that PC is actually going to cost a lot more than the Rift itself. Yeah, It's a luxury item. It's virtual reality. It is right now. The goal is that virtual reality is something that everyone has access to, that everyone can that anyone could use to experience anything, that's going to happen. Look at phones. Like yep. this phone that I have costs many hundreds of dollars. Yeah, that used to be like a big American psycho phone. You had oh, I'm not even on a shorter time frame. Go yeah. back to 2008, 2009. You had smartphones that cost six, seven, eight hundred dollars. You can buy an unsubsidized smartphone for less than a hundred dollars today that kicks that phone ass. That's what's going to happen with virtual reality. You go five years into the future, you won't be able to buy a headset this quality for more than a hundred dollars. And Damn. that's going to really change Them's change the market wars, drastically and make it available to a lot more people. W when does this particular introductory model come out? Like this is so we've announced that we're going to be shipping in Q1 of 2016. We'll be opening pre-orders later this year. We don't want to take your money until we can give you an exact date. That's awesome, Palmer. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Thank you. Always a pleasure. For all your E3 coverage, keep it right here on IGN. Take it easy.